Welcome to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. You're watching Big East Basketball. It is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. We're inside the Wells Fargo Center as the eighth-ranked Villanova Wildcats take on the Creighton Blue Jays. Let's take a look at the updated Big East standings, and everyone's looking up at Seton Hall. Those Pirates will know it's just a game behind them. Meanwhile, Creighton tied for third and looking to make ground on Nova today. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer alongside Lynn Elmore. Regular season finale between these two squads, Lynn, and Nova's been playing great. They've won seven straight, but Creighton's won three straight as well. Well, both of these teams achieving their win streaks differently. Villanova in their seven-game win streak allowing just 62 points per game. And Creighton, they're just flat out putting points on the board, 80 points, almost 80 points per game in their three-game win streak. And they're going to need all 80 if they're going to end the dominance Villanova has over them here in Philly. Let's get right to the starting lineup. They're brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Oh, you look at Marcus Zagorowski, top 10 in Big East points, assists, and field goals. He's been an offensive slump. He's got to regain consistency. And Villanova's Colin Gillespie, very consistent. He's been a main reason for Villanova's seven-game win streak. This is the 18th meeting between Creighton and Villanova. Our officials, Mike Roberts. Evan Burroughs and Roger Ayers. We got three of the best Ayers. He's done three Final Fours. Nova in the home white. Creighton in the visiting blue. And it's the Blue Jays who control the tip. Villanova obviously open with their customary man-to-man. -man. You know, looking to try to keep the middle clogged. Zigarowski lobbed it up for Bishop. Jeremiah Robinson Earl knocks it away. That fouls on Robinson Earl. There's Greg McDermott. He's in his 10th season head coach there at Creighton. 3 and 11 in his career against Villanova. Bishop misses that first free throw, the sophomore out of Missouri. One of two. And it's the Blue Jays on the board first. Yeah, Creighton on that possession, just trying to establish themselves inside. You know, they are a perimeter-oriented team. Tried to get it inside to Sadiq Bey, stolen away, though. Here's Zegarowski. Balak has got unlimited range from beyond the arc. You've got to account for him. Zegarowski. Inside the Bishop with the left hand too strong. Here's Robinson Earl. And Creighton in their man to man. There's some mismatches that Villanova can capitalize on because of the ability of all those guys on the floor to handle for Villanova. Samuels lays it in off the glass. Samuels. Missed their last game against St. John's with a foot injury, but he's back. And what he does, he provides them not only with a score, but a versatile defender who can play three and four spots. Ballock way off with that three. Damian Jefferson, the board. Zigarowski a pull from distance. His is too strong as well. Ballock got wide open shot. He had been hot of late. 19, uh, 19 for his last 41 three-pointers in five games before that one. Samuels looks to drive it inside, but he traveled. And again, that's one of those mismatches. Jermaine Samuels at 6'7 against Mitch Ballack, and he's going to find a way to post him up, force the Creighton defense to adjust. And that's where Villanova's at their best in finding open people. Nova, three possessions, two turnovers for the Wildcats thus far. Zigorowski tried to split that screen, nearly lost it. Villanova doing a nice job of getting over screens. Nice move. No finish, though. No, Bishop. Bishop. Yep, tried to use the right hand. So far, Blue Jays 0-4 from the field. 
Robinson Earl. Down low. Misses. Bishop stepped on the line. Again, this is the regular season finale between these two. The first one, Villanova won it earlier this month, January 7th. They beat Creighton by five. And yet Creighton had that game basically until the last four or five minutes of that game. And it was definitely the Villanova defense that held Creighton in check. Only one of nine from beyond the arc. Colin Gillespie knocks down the triple. And just on cue, it was that young man right there that carried his team. And Colin Gillespie has been terrific during this uh, seven-game win streak. Well, he had 24 against Creighton on the seventh. And Alexander drives the baseline and lays it in. Tyshawn Alexander. 24 points, subpar from the field. Only 5 of 15 against Xavier. But 10 of 11 from the free throw line certainly helped him put points on the board just when uh, Creighton needed him. Gillespie again pulls. Alexander the board, and here comes Creighton. Tyshawn from deep rattles it in for three. Alexander, 38% three point shooter but ranks fourth in points scored, third in free throws, and sixth in threes per game. He's one of those explosive scorers, as I mentioned, for Creighton. You've got to be able to account for on the floor. This is a Creighton squad that is second in the Big East in three-point percentage. Schreider misses his three. Gets a double screen, goes downhill, and banks it off the glass. And that's what they need from Marcus Zagorowski. In the three-game win streak prior to this game, he's only 10 of 30 from the field. Even though he's done other things, particularly in assists, doing a nice job of getting his other guys involved. 7-0 run by Creighton. Gillespie. In and out. Jefferson to Zagorowski, and here comes Creighton. I wonder why Sanders turned that one down, point blank in front of the rim. I know there's a defender there, but that's what you expect to go hard. Ballard calling for it. He played five minutes here in Philly. Look at the spacing for Creighton. Oh, looking to go one on one. Five on the shot clock. Jefferson stepped out of bounds. Tyshawn Alexander. Team's leading scorer obviously finds a little bit of daylight. The Swider doesn't get up on him quickly enough. Good start. Well, tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday. And make sure you're watching before kickoff or pregame show. You will not want to miss Demi Lovato, DJ Khaled, Yolanda Adam, Dan and Shea, Pitbull, all of that before the kickoff. Don't miss the Fox Super Bowl pregame show. You're hitting the private jet. You're going right to Miami after this, right? Yeah, I'm getting the private jet, all right. I'm taking the train home. <laughs> Eight to five, that's our score. I'll be on the couch. <laughs> Eighth ring, Villanova, Colin Gillespie down by three. The great Blue Jays. Gone on a 7-0 run. Creighton started this game 0-4 from the field. Since then, they've gone 3-3. Three three. And they've got four points in the paint, which, again, for Creighton, that's just establishing themselves inside. You know, they're more of a three-point shooting team, more of a perimeter shooting team. Gillespie. Ball fake. Drops it inside to Robinson Earl. He kicks it back out to Sadiq Bay. He misses the three, and here comes Creighton. On the attack. To the corner. Bella Count it. That's a solid ball movement there. And as I said, you've got to make Mitch Bella put it on the floor. If not, you're opening yourself up to a nightmare. Just an outstanding shooter. Mitch, on the arc. Mitch is now just two three-pointers away from being sixth all-time on the Creighton 
all-time three-point list. And there he is with his terrific block out of Samuel as well. They go into Jefferson. Jefferson turns. That one rolls off. Kelvin Jones is checked in for Creighton, the freshman. And you the see Creighton senior, doesn't I'm waste sorry. any Creighton doesn't waste any time putting it up. And they get a good look. They have a guy who got his defensive player in position. They'll take advantage. Look at the ball movement right here. Just a quick extra pass. Too late getting the ballot. And that to me is puzzling because he's one of the most dangerous guys on the floor beyond that arc. 45% on the season. He was named to the Big East honor roll this past week. Nova has now missed their last five shots, and all of them have been threes. Ripped Gillespie. The time Colin Gillespie trying to do too much, trying to split a defense. Zagorowski, the kick out, the corner. Mahoney misses from distance. See, they're going to give Robinson Earl plenty of room out there on the perimeter. Moore from the corner. That ends a scoring drought of more than four minutes for Villanova. And that's what defense does for you. They're only down three despite not being able to put the ball in the basket for a period of time. Here's Zigorowski. Misses. Jones, the offensive glass. Ten on the shot clock. Zigorowski turns and a little bump by Gillespie. Well, Justin Moore on the pass. Right there, just wide open, playing off him. Balak a little bit too far, looking to kind of help against the drive. And uh, Moore is another one of those guys, apparently, that Creighton is willing to live with getting an open look from beyond the arc. First on Gillespie. That might end pretty quickly if he knocks another one down. Ballock, step back three. Air ball. Yeah, that's not his shot. A contested three. That's not anybody's shot, really. If you're a coach, you'd rather see guys move the ball and get an open look. Bay, that one was strong as well. Alexander, he walked. Under 12, three-point lead for Creighton. Three-point lead for Creighton here in the first half. Uh, let's go in the huddle with the head Blue Jay, Greg McDermott. When we get ball reversals and multiple ball screens, they've struggled. All right, we got the flip up early, and now we've kind of gone away from it. Right, set it, roll physically, lift hard out of that corner, okay? Well, Greg McDermott obviously looking for more ball movement and looking for more ball screens and rolls hard because Villanova not decisive enough defensively to make sure that they cover those. And as far as swinging the ball from one side to the other, ball reversal, that's excellent ball movement. We've seen them successful on a couple of occasions when they've done that. Last time, Creighton... Victorious over Nova. Got to go back to February of 2018. The last time Creighton has gotten a victory over Villanova, but they're on a three-game win streak and looking to gain ground on the Wildcats in the conference standings. Yeah, that 2018 victory by Creighton. Marcus Foster, great scorer at 28, but that was also the year Villanova won the national championship. You're right. That jumper is short by Sadiq Bay. Let's take a look at whether or not there's a high ball screen that Greg McDermott asked for. Zagorowski, the handles and pulls up and knocks it down. I kind of like it when a coach tells you to do something Absolutely. and it works, right? Yes. <laughs> Zagorowski, obviously offensively, starting to get his bearings. We talked about 
the struggles he's had from the field over the last three games, but he's still playing with a lot of confidence. Here's Samuels, drives, challenged at the rim by Bishop. Yeah, good wall up by Bishop, even though the secondary defender in the restricted area, you're allowed to get your hands straight up and jump straight up. Here's Mahoney, backing down, Gillespie, tries to lean in. <laughs> it's a roll. <laughs> Nova was looking for a travel, thinking that he dragged his pivot foot. Graydon with the largest lead. Yeah, that right foot was nailed to the floor. I was watching it. He used his upper body strength to get himself open. And Denzel Mahoney, one of those guys that comes off the bench with minutes and scoring. Nova swinging it around the perimeter. The hand off the bay. Bay's got to be more aggressive, look for a shot. He's got the size advantage. Two the on paint. the shot clock, and Swider lost it. Another turnover. The fourth for Villanova. Tyshawn from the corner. And Brian, remember Jay told us today how his team, because of this growth and decisiveness on both offense and defense, you know, that's accounted for this seven-game win streak. They're connected. That time we're seeing some indecisiveness. Swider misses. Nova, four turnovers, just three field goals thus far. That ball pops with Creighton. Bishop goes inside, denied. Bishop's getting the opportunity now right around the basket. Just has had a lot of difficulty finishing. You know, he's got some length in there. He might be a little undersized. But he's got those long arms. He's got some athleticism. More. I don't know if that's the shot you want. Now to the freshman. Well, you're right. You don't know if that's the shot you want at that particular time. He was open. Maybe you explore a little bit more. You know, recognizing you're down seven. You want to look for a better shot. Nova. Has now missed 10 of their last 11 shots. Wow. Three of 14, Nova is thus far from the field. I mean, neither team exactly lighting it up. Bala! However, that's how you light it up. <laughs> Knocks it down. Playing here in Philly, he wears 24. Kobe Bryant was his idol. Ballot two or four from beyond the arc. Again, that's his game. And that was an unchallenged three. Gillespie gets bumped on that drive. Oh, they're going to call a kick. Oh, they call a foul. Yeah. Trip. Trip. Roger Ayers right on the baseline. He sees it. Just a little bit of a knee, it seems, from Zegarowski. Just enough to get Gillespie off balance. Here's Bay. Got it. Now that's his first field goal. You know, he's got a Wildcats have to breathe a little bit easier right now. They got one of their leading scorers off the snipe. Zagorowski probes. Mahoney, two dribble pull up. Gillespie, the board. And here comes Nova down eight. Right on that last possession, you saw the matchup. Bay has to guard the point guard. Oh, what a dime. Gillespie threw. Robinson Earl, he lost it. Now, Sadiq Bay, Villanova looking for him to get open as. The defender, Jefferson, winds up chasing him, and he gets a good look out of an inbounds play. And on the defensive end, you know, Creighton found kind of a mismatch with Zegarowski driving around Bay, creating all sorts of problems. But when you look at Villanova, they've got versatile defenders. They've got four forwards out there guarding three guards. Bay and Gillespie are a combined one of four thus far. Five turnovers for the Wildcats. By that time, Jones made up his mind what he was going to do. Here comes the freshman. To Sadiq Bey. The handle. Pulled. 
misses forward the board. Here comes Creighton now, and under I, eight to play. I don't have a problem with that shot. Bay gets in the mid-range and elevates. Just wound up missing it, but that was a good shot. Zagorowski, and he walks. Seven minutes, 22 seconds until the half. It's Creighton with an eight-point lead. It's the Creighton Blue Jays with an eight-point lead over the eighth-ranked team in the country. Let's go in the huddle with Nova head coach Jay Wright. Hey, keep taking our shots. We got good shots. Keep taking them. All right? Still, still catch the shoot. You got him. You got him. You got it. Well, Jay Wright told us before the game that their philosophy is. You know, if you catch it and you got a good shot, let it go. You know, think shot first. And what they've been able to do, the Wildcats, is get some good looks. They're only they're 4 of 16 from the field, including uh, 2 of 10 from beyond the arc. But they've gotten several good looks. As I mentioned earlier, the last offensive play with Sadiq Bey in the mid-range pulls up, elevates in the paint. That's a good shot. It just didn't fall. And, you know, you don't make the shots you don't take. <laughs> That's the one. Thing I think he's reminding them of. Wildcats shooting just 25% from the field right now. Villanova has yet to score on back-to-back -back possessions. And defensively, when you look at Villanova, Craig's only shooting 37% from the field. So their defense is still pretty good. Here's Robinson Earl. And you see why. Robinson Earl wide open. He's one of the guys that Greg McDermott said they're going to play off. <clears throat> They'll play off the Tyshawn Alexander. He okay. knocks down a triple. It's the largest lead for Creighton today. It's double digits, 11. You know, Jay Wright said, let's take our shots and take good shots, but you got to get the right people shooting them. On the other hand, Creighton is finding their open guys. Gillespie. He knocks down. Big yeah. jumper. They needed that one. Yeah, that's one of the right guys. Again, good ball movement by Villanova now again it still comes down to the defense you know in the first game that these two teams played back on January 7th kind of went the same way that we're watching right here Creighton goes off to a pretty sizable lead knocked away from Bishop he got it back kicks it out to Alexander from the corner count it <laughs> two straight for Tyshawn I'm chuckling because Bishop had a layup a 95% shot kicked it out for that three, which is probably a 35% shot, 38% uh, from Tyshawn Alexander, but it paid off for him. That is Creighton's bread and butter, that three. Samuel, the triple is no good. You know, Jay Wright told his guys to take their shots and good, but you can see it's planted a little bit of a uh, Hesitation and doubt. Put a hand in his face. Tyshawn Alexander, three straight threes, and Creighton has opened up a 15-point lead here in Philly. And just the opposite with Creighton. You talk about confidence. My goodness. Tyshawn Alexander, you see that Bishop had the layup. He knows to turn it over to his scorer. And then Bishop once again <laughs> to Alexander. Well, Tyshawn Alexander has just been red hot. 14 points. He's the game high score. Three straight threes. Yeah, he's been able to put the ball on the floor, utilize his quickness. As I said, some mismatches out there where bigger guys are guarding Alexander. But then the open look, even now, challenge once he gets off. And that wide open. He's not going to miss many of those. He's he, just find a way to, to be able to get shots off. Now. He's missed just one shot from the field. He's got 14 points. He's outscored Villanova. For, Villanova as a team has 12. And I'm surprised Villanova not going to the guy Alexander is guarding, who is Sadiq Bey. You know, that's one way you cool the guy down, force him to play defense. And Bey didn't even touch the ball on that last possession. Here's Jefferson, the triple. Missed it. 
Samuels the board. Here comes Gillespie. Jump stop in the lane. Count the bucket and one for the freshman. Greg McDermott thought this was a travel. Jump stop comes in. Yeah, he came down on both feet. That's, that's one of the keys to a jump stop. Once you jump, you've got to land with both feet and take off with both feet. Uh, I think the argument also may be a continuation. Was he fouled before he got into the act of shooting? There is no continuation in college basketball. I should say, but. They, they, they called the foul on Jefferson, and originally they gave it to Alexander, but now uh, Jefferson is called for that foul. And we got a lane violation. Lane violation on Creighton. And that one on Creighton. So the freshman, Justin Moore, will get one more. He leads all Big East freshmen in points. He's been named four times Big East freshman of the week. Missed that one as well. He's a 79% free throw shooter. I think Jay Wright has got guys who are digging in defensively out there on the floor. Particularly with Slater, Moore, you know, Swider. Zigarowski drove, missed it. And here comes Moore and the Wildcats. And with the team that's out there now, you're going to have to rely on Gillespie and Moore primarily for offense. Here's Slater. Brandon. Tried to go off the glass. No good. Back the other way comes Creighton. Coming up on four minutes until the half. Good deep by Robinson Earl. We keep Ballard from turning the corner. Zagorowski. Mm -hmm. That's tough. This young man can get buckets. Marcus Zagorowski, he's a sophomore out of Massachusetts. See, right now, again, Villanova doesn't have enough offensive power out there on the floor. They're going to have to rely on a couple of guys to carry him. And the one guy that you're expecting is Gillespie. He hasn't been able to touch it. Zagorowski's doing a nice job of keeping his hands off. See that overplay right there? And stepped out of bounds. Another turnover for Nova. Sixth of the game. Marcus Zagorowski off the bounce in the paint. Count it. Welcome back. 15 point lead for Creighton. Don't forget, coming up, the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report. We'll check in with my man Mike Hill, Steve Lavin, and Casey Jacobson, and Seton Hall. Oh, boy, they are. And a dog fight with Xavier and Ohio State looking to avenge that loss to Indiana, the Hoosiers as well. Uh, in the Big East, nothing is certain right now. You can't go into any game thinking that you've got it made because of the competitiveness top to bottom. Seton Hall went into that game on a 10-game winning streak as well. But how about Tyshawn Alexander? 14 points. He's missed just one shot from the field. He also got five boards. And, and he's getting the shots that he wants. He's been moving well without it. You see a little three-quarter pressure from Villanova. Villanova, on the other hand, only four points in the paint. They've got some mismatches out there with the forwards on the floor, but they haven't been able to take advantage. Zagorowski! Oh! And stops, flip. turns, and knocks it down. Well, the flip side of it is you see Sadiq Bey Again, at 6'8", trying to guard the smaller, quicker Zagorowski at 6'2". Right now, it's not happening mm. for Villanova. Trying to get, put some length on him. They disrupt him, and then Zagorowski reaches in on Gillespie and ties him up. Zagorowski doing it offensively and defensively. Again, this is just a case where Sadiq Bey is left naked out there. The quickness of Zagorowski and the accuracy. But the flip side, as I said, uh, I'm surprised Villanova's not taking better advantage of their size on the offensive end. 
is hurting them on defense, but they can make some hay on offense. Robinson Earl, the freshman, bullying his way to the rim, but missed it. Kelvin Jones was diving for that loose ball. Robinson Earl trying to do his part. Taking his man down, bumping him, and then going hard, both of them. Jones with the hustle, diving for the ball. They'll call the foul on Jones. But you gotta love that. You love that hustle if you're Greg McDermott. Yeah, those flow burns are like medals, man. Heroism. Second foul on Jones. By the way, just in case you're wondering, the fewest points Nova's ever had at the half, three. 22 as Moore knocks down that three. And yeah, Mahoney was given Moore plenty of room. And you've got to be able to knock those shots down to force the defense to tighten up, which opens up other opportunities. Here's Alexander. He finally misses. Maybe he was too close. <laughs> Jane Samuels is going to check back in. Robinson Earl will get a breather. Craig's still doing a pretty good job of moving the ball, utilizing mismatches when they come about. Villanova's going to have to string some stops together. Moore, Moore has scored the last five, making seven for Villanova. And that's what I talked about, taking advantage of the mismatches they have on the offensive end. Zagorowski, oh, look at the handles. And then drops a dime to Mahoney, who lays it in, diving to the basket. Hey, give Mahoney a lot of credit as well as Zagorowski. Mahoney with the dive, as you mentioned. Seeing Zagorowski's in trouble, lost his dribble. If you're Villanova, though, you wonder how do you allow the guy to cut to the basket that easily. Here's Moore. Gillespie now lays it in as he drives the baseline. I'd like to see more of that if you're Jay Wright. It kind of counters Zegarowski's advantage out there. Mahoney thought about it. Now inside to Bishop. He's got the mismatch. Double team, but Mahoney lays it in. Someone missed assignment. Absolutely no communication out there by Villanova. Nova has scored on their last three trips here on the offensive end. Swider make it four straight. Twelve-point lead for Creighton. Forty seconds until the half. Well, again, we talk about lack of communication on the defensive end. Uh, Creighton's doing a terrific job. Ball goes into Bishop right on the right side of your screen. You'll take a look. You have Samuels just standing there. Swider does the right thing to try to help Gillespie, who's obviously in a mismatch situation with the 6'7 Bishop. But once Swider goes, somebody's got to talk. Somebody's got to tell him, I'm going, you take him. But again, this is what Jay Wright was talking about, the maturity of this team early this season with the seven-game win streak. It has a lot to do with the communication and the connectedness. Turn Didn't see it on that one. Yep, turnover. Creighton. About a two-second differential between the play clock high and the shot clock. High screen. A little bit of way. There you go. You missed it. Here's Moore. Samuel with two. With one. Forces it up. Alexander. And it's the Blue Jays who will go into the locker room with a 12-point lead. A mini run by Nova. 9-4 to four to end the first half. Creighton. 35, Villanova, 23. Hey, stay tuned.
the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report. It is coming up right after this break. Welcome to the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report. It is halftime in Philadelphia. Tyshawn Alexander putting in work. Creighton led by as many as 17 points. It's a 12-point lead, 35-23 at the half. Welcome inside our L.A. studios. Casey Jacobson, Steve Lavin, Mike Hill hanging out with you. The first time these two teams met earlier this year, earlier in January, Tyshawn Alexander was 2-10 uh, for 10 from the field, mm -hmm. 0 for 5 from three-point land, 8 points. I think he remembered that performance because <laughs> it's making did. up for it today. The Jeep Grand Cherokee highlights from the first half, all about Ty and that three-point shoot. Guys, are people forgetting how good Tyshawn Alexander is? I know he's not quite as dynamic as Marcus Howard or Miles Powell, but he's the fourth leading scorer in the Big East Conference, and he's coming off a season-high 24-point game laugh, so you know he's confident. Uh, confident. He's got a game-high 14 points. He's got a game-high six rebounds as well. My big knock on Tyshawn so far has been that he hasn't been the same player on the road as he has been at home. That's certainly not the case today. Mm -hmm. Creighton is a top 25 basketball team. I know they're not ranked right now, but they have five quad one wins, which is a ton. This would be their best win if they can hold on to it in the second half. Uh, second half. Their best win up to date right now is a win on neutral floor against Texas Tech. I really like Creighton. If they can somehow uh, close this game off, Lab, I think they're going to get a lot more national respect. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing this Creighton team kind of impose their will on Villanova in the first half. We don't see that often. I mean, you mentioned Alexander in terms of the threes and his shooting, but he also had six rebounds. And if you look at the three-point attack, which is always the key with Villanova, uh, they're minus nine in that area. The advantage goes to the Blue Jays because they have six three-pointers, and Villanova only has three. See, I know my math. That's a <laughs> nine-point differential. I think the biggest concern, though, for Villanova at halftime is just across the board playing better defense, giving up 48% from the field overall, not just shooting the three-point line that uh, Creighton's playing well at, but uh, the in overall defense have been subpar. So he knows math, but I don't know if he knows timing. The producer said rap about 15 seconds ago. <laughs> no, but that's okay. That's we, a we give. love that. He should never give me any time. <laughs> I don't have nothing left. Xavier coming off a tough double overtime loss against Marquette. Uh, could they rebound and snap Seton Hall's 10-game win streak? Looking good right now. Plenty more college hoops coming your way later as 16th ranked Butler battles Providence at 2 Eastern. Then later tonight at 1030, it's number 20 Colorado and USC. You can catch all the action on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Over on Fox right now, number 10 Seton Hall going for its 11th straight win. But Xavier not trying to have it today, fellas. Oh, this is Najee Marshall for much of this game. It hasn't been the Miles Powell show. It's been Najee Marshall, the best player on the floor. Uh, Xavier led this game by as many as 24 points. Uh, they're up by 10 right there. And then uh, let's add a little injury to insult right here. Quincy McKnight. Oh, oh that's not man. what your leg's supposed to do right there. And he is vital to Seton Hall's long-term success oh. this year. We wish him well. We hope it's oh. not as bad as it looks, mm. Mike. Yes, he had to be helped off the floor. Of course, we'll keep you posted on that injury. And, uh give you uh, an update during our post-game show on Fox. Meanwhile, Ole Miss number 22 LSU, Skylar Mays, academic All-American. First team academic All-American. Both of his parents are doctors. After his pro career, maybe he wants to become a doctor himself, Mike. You see, Lab, I had to let the Stanford grad talk about that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. LSU's won nine straight games, by the way, guys. They're undefeated in the SEC. They're rolling right now about 23. <laughs> Tiger growl. Okay. Indiana at Ohio State. That's Bill Walton next <laughs> Tiger. Laugh, what's a buckeye do? What kind of what kind of noise does a buckeye make? Good question. You know, I've never been able to quite figure out what a buckeye's about. <laughs> Andre West is making those nets go splash right there. Ohio State up by nine at the half over Indiana. Tyshawn Alexander. Oh, he's huge right now. He's got 14 big points. His team is up by 12. Second half coming up right after this. Welcome back. We're in Philadelphia, Big East basketball. It is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee at the half. And it's Creighton with a 12-point lead over Villanova. Brian Custer alongside Lynn Elmore. You look at that first half, all of a sudden Creighton catches fire from three. Nova can't hit his shot, but I tell you, Tyshawn Alexander. Boy, what a first half he had. Yeah, Tyshawn Alexander has been able to take advantage of his teammates' ability to move the ball and also his ability to find open spots in transition. 
No hesitation right there. Again, challenge shots, but it's too late. And then Marcus Zegarowski, as Alexander is Mr. Outside, Zegarowski, even at 6'2", has been Mr. Inside with his dribble penetration, ability to get around the bigger guys that are guarding him. But the one guy keeping Villanova in it close is Justin Moore, who's taking advantage with his size and athleticism inside. Here's a look at the first half stats. They're brought to you by G. Grand Cherokee. You see Wildcats shooting just 36% from the field. Meanwhile, Creighton, 48% from the field, 46% from distance. Yeah, you look at the rebounds of Creighton out rebounding Villanova, which, you know, Creighton is not known as a, a terrific rebounding team. Obviously, you know, minus in the rebound margin. So Villanova's got to start taking more advantage of their length. Jefferson. Challenged by Swider at the rim. And that's a good example. Here's Gillespie. Robinson Earl drives it in, turns, uses the left hand, misses, follows it up. And a foul on Bishop. And we've talked about it in the first half how Creighton is not going to go out and guard Robinson Earl on the perimeter. And you like the fact that Robinson Earl didn't settle for the jump shot as he did in the first half. This time, he was meaning business taking it down into the paint. So Jeremiah Robinson Earl, the freshman, he's been named Big East Freshman of the Week three straight weeks. Knocks down that first free throw. You know, this is a McDonald's All-American as well. You know, that's only the, the second free throw attempt by Villanova in this game. You know, they average about 16 free throws per game. So, you know, that just demonstrates they haven't been nearly as aggressive as they should be. See, Samuel's checked out and ran straight back to the locker room. So now a little bit of pressure by Nova. Lead is 10. Uh, Villanova persists in keeping Sadiq Bey on Marcus Zagorowski. Zagorowski with the quickness advantage. Alley-oop to Bishop. Knocked away by Robinson Earl, the freshman. Gillespie for three. Yes! Count it! Lead is now single digits. For Creighton. Using a little bit of that Creighton hair that bit Villanova in transition. Finding open three-point shooters is what the Wildcats have done thus far. Nova on a 14-4 run. That alley -oop no good. Bay for three. And Jefferson snags it. That would have brought the roof off of this place. And he made it. Zigorowski drives. Count the bucket and one. My goodness. Villanova trying to get back into it, using a little bit of defense right there. Nice job by Jeremiah Robinson Earl. And then in transition, they find their guy, Colin Gillespie, who knocks down the three and brings him closer. But give a lot of credit to Marcus Zegarowski. Again, at 6-2, utilizing quickness to get in the paint and create havoc. Zegarowski now with 10 points. Joins Alexander, the only Blue Jays in double figures. Gillespie, pull up. Yes! And Colin Gillespie's getting warm. And he certainly is. In the seven game win streak, he's averaged almost 17 points a game. Equally as important, he doesn't turn the ball over. Almost four to one assist turnover ratio. Bishop lost it, turnover, Creighton. As a primary ball handler, Colin Gillespie in this seven game win streak. 260 minutes he's played, he's only turned it over eight times. Nova started this game six of 23 from the field. They've gone six of nine here lately. Here's Gillespie. Dropped it off to Robinson Earl, knocked away, stolen by Creighton. Tough pass, too crowded with the blue shirts. Zigarowski, yes, from three. He <laughs> led the conference in three point percentage last year 
Beginning of telecast, we talked about Zegarowski needs to improve his consistency, particularly from the floor, even though he was creating opportunities for others. And he has definitely improved today, no question. He's got 13. Swider. Ball fake, drives the baseline, and trip. So the Blue Jays, they got a triple threat when you talk about guys who can shoot it from distance. Yeah, and this spreads the floor, forces teams to create space, and that gives guys like Zagorowski opportunities to drive and do what he's doing today, get into the paint with a man on him. But they just have a knack for knocking down shots. Gillespie. Pull up. Mm. Colin Gillespie. Now with 14. Speaking of the neck, again, spread floor Gillespie one on one. People just don't, they underestimate his toughness. He has scored the last seven for Villanova. Mahoney. Lead is eight. Moore, inside to Samuel, who dunks it home. Lead is now six. A 31-14 run here by Nova. And there, Jefferson. That's just solid execution by Creighton that time with the cuts and with the patience. But speaking of patience on the other end, you know, I think that Colin Gillespie finally has got the groove and his teammates are allowing him to orchestrate more than they did in the first half. Gillespie again, another pull up. Gillespie now with 16. He has come out here in the second half smoking. Well, this looks like the same script the last time these two teams met in Omaha. Big lead by Creighton, only for Villanova to play solid defense, find some scoring from Gillespie to whittle it down and hopefully find a way to win. Nice job there by Mahoney. Instant offense, as we talked about, averaging almost 15 points a game over the last five in only 24 minutes. Instant offense, all you got to do is add minutes. It's the 18th meeting between these squads. Nova leads the all-time series 14 to three. That shot was short. Samuels, the offensive glass, uses the left hand, but he will go to the line. Okay, we talked about toughness, and it was right there, getting into the paint, finding the open man. All of that began with Colin Gillespie, and here, that's just a take by Mahoney. We played five and a half here in the second half, but we got a huge night of Big East hoops. It's coming your way Wednesday on FS1. First, you've got these eighth-ranked Villanova Wildcats. They battle 16th-ranked Butler. That's at 6.30. Then at 8.30, Miles Powell leads the 10th-ranked Seton Hall. Pirates against Georgetown. Both games available on the Fox Sports app. And speaking of those Seton Hall Pirates, lost today. 10-game winning streak is over. They suffer their first conference loss to Xavier Miles Powell. By the way, 3 of 14. Just nine points in that loss. You know, kind of bound to happen. I mean, in this conference right here, somebody's going to find a way. Uh, you know, we talk about Villanova's dominance over Creighton here in Philadelphia, 11 and 1 over the last 12 games played here. And we've seen what uh, the Blue Jays have been able to do. But this one's not over. You're right. Samuels knocks down both of those. Meanwhile, and a little bitty, Big East birdie told me that every Seton Hall broadcast that you do, they usually win. They're 25 and 0 with you. <laughs> know, that that's spot. Great. That's it's, crazy. Is it's that not... what they were emailing for? <laughs> that's uncanny. Brian Custer, where are you? 
Meanwhile, Nova 26 and 1 in the last 27 games in this building. Their last loss, you got to go back to 2018 when they lost to St. John's in February of that year. And they're 10 and 0 this year at home, whether it's here or in the pavilion. Yep. Nova was ranked first in the country on that night. Here's Robinson Earl. See how much room Robinson Earl gets by Mahoney. And there's a double of the ball. Swing it. Sadiq Bay. Solid, solid defense by Tarzan Alexander. Kept his hands up. Didn't leave the ground on the fake. Mahoney's asking for it in the post against Gillespie. That three no good by Zegarowski. And that's going to be a foul on Mahoney. I'm really surprised that Zegarowski took that shot, recognizing the mismatch. And Mahoney down low. But Zegarowski had a bit of a mismatch himself with Robinson Earl guarding him. And underneath, you see on the back, uh, Mahoney just discards Gillespie. Not a smart play. This team's fourth team foul. Crowd cheering on Nova as Gillespie misses Robinson Earl the follow and he'll go to the line. We talked about free throw shooting just one attempt in the first half. Villanova now getting to the line more frequently. Remember they're in the top 10 in the nation in free throw shooting on 78%. First free throw is good. You know, we talked about Villanova on this seven-game winning streak. That streak began with their victory over Creighton in early January. Yeah, it certainly did. And again, it was one of those things that highlighted the connectedness that Jay Wright talks about. When you see the growth, particularly on the defensive end, in decisive decision-making. We've seen some breakdowns of those throughout this particular game thus far. But very few here in the second half. Oh, here comes the Wells Fargo crowd. This is the closest this game's been since it was 11 to 8 in the first half. Zegarowski probing. Turns. Tries to drop it off inside to Jones. Five now on the shot clock. Pull up three. Zegarowski hit the deck looking for a foul, no call. Samuels, the rolls off for the three. You see that battle, Robinson Earl and Mahoney tangled up, tied up underneath the basket, getting chippy out here. Yes, it is, and Mahoney draws the foul on Robinson Earl. That's what Jay Wright is arguing about. He felt like Robinson Earl got fouled trying to follow up that miss. Four-point lead for Creighton. I'm wondering if they're reviewing to get a flagrant one. Mike Roberts and Evan Burroughs there some, at the table. Some excessive conduct. Now that could cut both ways. Both of those guys were tied up. Jay Wright called for it. You got to be careful. <laughs> Make find this guy to be the culprit. Look at the rule book. What constitutes a flavor one and a flavor two? Watch the follow up here. Watch Robinson Earl. 34 and Mahoney. Yep. Now that's a play on. It's a play on, but you get pretty close to the edge.
Talk about excessive unwarranted contact. Both of these guys fighting. Mahoney trying to block out. And as I said, Robinson Oh, they'll be careful because he might have grabbed, got a little hook under the arm. And Mahoney grabbed the arm, so get an opportunity to be briefed by the officials. Evan Burroughs. Well, Evan Burroughs, the official, came and said it was a hook, but it wasn't a hook and hold. And therefore, they allowed it. It's not a flagrant one, which is all they can review it for. They can't call a common foul. And so Villanova, in asking for that review, is charged with a timeout. So here's Mahoney. Denzel's a senior. Transferred in from Southeast Missouri State. In the last five games, this guy's been averaging 14 points and shooting 46% from the field. And they're from Creighton's 4 and 1 in those games. And he's only done it in an uh, average of about 24 minutes. I'd say 14.8. I round him up to the top. The lead now is six for Creighton. And since they had that huge lead where it was 31 14, Nova's been on this 26. 15 kind of run to cut into it as Moore knocks down a big three. Well, that was excellent delivery by Robinson Earl. And remember, Jay Wright told us before the game, this the key to this game would be Robinson Earl, among others, who they play off of. It's not about him scoring. It's about him making plays. Well, you saw one of those plays right there. Big shot from the freshman. Bella, <clears throat> right back at you. <laughs> Smooth lefty. Ballock has made a three in 21 straight games. He is now sixth all time on the Creighton three pointer list. During that win streak, three game win streak, he's shooting about 46% from three. And they let Robinson Earl shoot that wide open three. Here's Mahoney. Oh, nice, nice, nice move nice. and gets the roll. Show him the ball. Yes. Get him on the move and show him the ball, make him commit. And now you see why Mahoney scores points in a hurry. He's always the first man off the bench, but he plays a lot of minutes like a starter. Here's Sadiq Bay. Big three. And even though Sadiq Bey is guarding Zegarowski and being guarded by a guard, he's more effective right now from beyond the arc instead of taking his man down low and trying to exploit the mismatch. Ballard lays it up. Gillespie lays it in. Three-point lead for Creighton. I think Zegarowski got mesmerized a little bit Actually looked at the official looking for a travel, but quite a move by Colin Gillespie. Greg McDermott calls a timeout. Wells Fargo is rocking. They've cut the lead to three. Got a good one here in Philly. Three-point lead for Creighton over eighth-ranked Villanova. Let's take a look at the academic ambitions. It is sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right all in one app. And Brandon Slater got a 3.2 GPA, majors in communication, says he's interested in working in film or perhaps some other job in the media. The sophomore. But lately here, it has been Colin Gillespie here for Villanova. Well, he is absolutely the acknowledged leader of this team. You know, Jay Wright told us before the game at the beginning of the season, Gillespie was, you know, kind of relegated to trying to get everybody else involved and then look for his shot. He's starting to realize that what that does is gets his team in a hole quickly. Right now, he's trying to take over, fill the spots where his team needs some offense, and thus far, he's done a terrific job. The other side of his is that Tyshawn Alexander, 14 points at the half, has not scored here in the second half. 
So Villanova's defense has put the clamps on him. Here's Tyshawn with the rock right now. And just five on the shot clock. Mahoney. He'll pull up. Oh, from deep. Oh, that was cold blooded. Wow. Mahoney with 15. Six of nine from the field. Sadiq Bay. And Sadiq Bay, just enough offense to keep Alexander occupied. That's one of the things that's kind of slowed Alexander down. Not that Bay is scoring, but at least he's been handling it. It puts a lot of pressure on guys who are hot on the other end. Nice. Alexander went with the backdoor cut. Bay knocks it away and gets tripped up. Well, there's no question about it. Denzel Mahoney transfers southeast Missouri. He's a scorer. And then Sadiq Bay is starting to work his magic. Four point lead for Creighton. You know, earlier this afternoon, Villanova's women's basketball coach, Harry Peretta. He was honored. Harry's in his 42nd season coaching the Villanova women. And he's going to retire after this season. 777 career wins, 20 seasons with 20 or plus wins. 11 trips to the NCAA tournament. Congratulations to him. Four point lead here for Creighton. Nine minutes left in this game. Nova began the day a game behind Seton Hall in the conference standings. With a victory, they would be tied. Big three. No. Swider has it knocked away from him, taken away by Mahoney. Yeah, good job by Mahoney to kind of dig underneath. Quick shot by Gillespie. He must have been feeling a little bit. He does have 18 points in this game. There it goes again. Bishop is ripped. They wanted a foul. Here's Swider. Big three. Misses. You know, Creighton would love to get Tyshawn Alexander started to go along with Mahoney. Mahoney's got 15 points thus far. And they're gonna isolate him. Show and go. Man. Mm. Lays it in. Mahoney's been a one-man wrecking crew here in this second half. Remember, Mahoney sat out the first 10 games of this season as a transfer. And this is the 10th out of 12 games that he scored in double figures. He's got 19, or he's got 17, but 19 is his season high. That came against Georgetown. And, you know, they know a good thing when they see it. This matchup right here. Swider just can't stay with Mahoney. Mahoney gets him deep. Right there. It's like getting him in the back pocket. Yes, it is. Fourth personal on Bishop. So he's going to have to have his seat. One and one for Gillespie. He rolls off. Colin Gillespie, 85% free throw shooter. An opportune time. And this fire. Here's Alexander. Under eight to play. Inside to Jones on the block. Backs him down. Rise up and knock it down, big man. Nice use of the shoulders by Jones. Get that little shimmy. Kind of froze Robinson Earl and allowed him to turn and hit that turnaround. Eight point lead for Creighton. Under eight to play. Look at the hard head, John Gillespie. They're going to leave Robinson Earl outside. Now he does a good job of getting in. Got to go strong. Missed it. Samuels. His nice. shot is blocked. Nice job by Jones once again. This is an added benefit. We talked about the perimeter-oriented Creighton Blue Jays. Anytime you can get their bigs in the paint to make a nice move, you're ahead of the game. Eight 
point lead for the Creighton Blue Jays over Villanova. Seven minutes to play. Let's go in the huddle with the coach of the decade, Jay Wright. Hey guys, it's just toughness. He, he backed you down to here until you gave him any resistance. So, so first thing we put on the first thing we put on the board, right? He's got to play hard. Chest, right? Stance, right? Ain't happen. Ain't happen. Well, I'll tell you, Jay Wright exhorting his guys to play hard. Actually, he should say they need to play harder because right now everybody from Creighton trying to hold on and Kelvin Jones doing a terrific job inside, just walling up, utilizing that length. You know, he blocks one shot, he gets another one blocked inside. And again, that's done wonders for the Creighton defense. It allows them to feel as though they can go outside pressure a little more and when the ball goes inside to help you know they've got a, a rim protector we know Villanova has cut the lead to three points here twice here in the second half but Creighton has responded both times with runs one a 5-0 run the other one was a 7-2 run Nova four straight misses here from the field Sadiq Bay make it five straight Ballot. Boy, Sadiq Bey's got to take full advantage of that. He had Tyshawn Alexander, had him beat, and just missed the left-handed layup. Under seven minutes. Creighton began the day two games behind Nova in the standings. Ballock for three. Yes! Now, Robinson Earl has to realize who's coming off that high screen. If it's Ballock, you've got a hard hedge. 7-0 run by Creighton. Can't allow Ballock him, with 12. Can't allow him to come off clean like that. And he's got the rock right now. They've got numbers. He gives it up to Mahoney. He lays it in. Creighton out and running. Six minutes. 13-point lead for the Creighton Blue Jays. And just like that, Creighton turns this thing upside down. Once again, Villanova making a run. A lot of it had to do with the fact they're getting better shots. They haven't turned the ball over since the 16-minute mark here in the second half. And that allowed them better possessions, more possessions. But there's a situation on the turnover right there. Just a good two-on-one fast break. Forcing Justin Moore to commit, find the open man. Simple. Creighton has gone on a 9-0 run here in the last two minutes and 14 seconds. Creighton has won three straight, coming off. Being in the tie for third in the conference with Butler. Yeah, Creighton has done a terrific job in this instance of playing their game. You know, taking what's been given them on the perimeter, isolating mismatches, particularly with Mahoney, and playing a little interior defense as well as Jones has really stepped up. Here's Gillespie. To Samuels. And he knocks it down in the lane. Again, you can't settle for threes, as Samuel just demonstrated. And Zagorowski throws it to Balak, who was not anticipating the pass at all. And immediately, Balak tells Zagorowski to shake it off. Take a look right there. He's not ready. And Zagorowski had that down in the dumps look. Balak with his senior leadership telling him to shake it off. He's got a game to play. 1-3-1. Where Creighton goes to the zone here. Here's Bay. Ballock snags the board. Once again, a good shot, but against that zone, you can probably find a better shot. Plus, Villanova's got to hit the offensive glass. You know, their missed shots have given them opportunities. That one rolls out. 
Here's Gillespie. Skip pass stolen by Tyshawn Alexander. That's a solid awareness by Alexander on the weak side. Zagorowski. Haynes misses. Zagorowski on the drive. Now Jones has got to get to the weak side quicker. Instead, he waits for Robinson Earl to go for the rebound. Don't stand there and watch when your guy's driving to the basket. Get to that weak side glass, command it. And maybe that's a putback instead of a foul. Good news for Nova. Now you can go to the line and try to cut into that lead with the clock stop. Yeah, this is starting to maybe look a little bit like the scenario on January 7th. And Villanova was trailing by eight with eight minutes left. They went on 11-2 run and took a lead. Creighton right now, they said, we've been there before. <laughs> we're, not, we're not allowing that to happen so far. You know, we don't want deja vu all over again. Big free throws by the freshman, Robinson Earl. Mahoney a little confused right there. And turns it over. Yeah, you could see that there was tentativeness on the part of Denzel Mahoney on that pass. You got to be connected, if you will. Mahoney with that pass right there. And fortunately, Zegarowski also is a bounce pass. Zegarowski didn't handle it well. Can't turn over for Creighton. Free throw miss. Samuels grabs the board. Moore for three. Count it. The freshman out of Damatha High School. Four of five from three is the freshman today. Are we looking at the same script? Is this a rerun of January 7th? So Nova now on a 7-0 run. The answer is Creighton's 9-0 run that they put up a couple minutes ago. Here's Mahoney. Drive. Missed it. What a rebound. What a rebound. And stolen by Sadiq Bay. Just getting ready to give Jefferson all the credit in the world, and he gives it back. Gillespie. Challenged, though, at the rim. And Creighton wisely slows the tempo down. Tarshawn Alexander, the junior, recognizing that the clock and execution is what favors them. Alexander drives, oh. rejected at the rim by Samuels. Oh, oh we got man. a finish here in Philly. 3.28 until the break. Look at Samuels on the beam. He saw it coming all the way. Rejection. We got a great finish here in Philly. Eighth rank Villanova down by six to Creighton. We take a look at our game reset. Blue Jays with a couple of timeouts. Nova with just one. Creighton about to enter, uh, get Villanova into the double bonus, which is important for Villanova to recognize they don't have to settle for jump shots. They've got to put the pressure on the Creighton defense. And in this 7-0 run by Villanova, Creighton's turned the ball over three times, and they've been 0 for their last four from the field. We've got to find a way to regain their momentum. This is a big game here, especially when you talk about the standings in the conference. Seton Hall took a loss to Xavier today, so now their first conference loss. That means for Villanova, a victory. Hey, they're tied for first place. Meanwhile, if you're Creighton, you get a win. You're now just a game oh, behind Nova as Bala knocks down the three, fading out of bounds. And Gillespie all up in his grill. 
nevertheless, Balak buries it. Balak's got 15. He's 5 of 7 from distance. Bay turns, misses. And once again, Villanova, they got an opportunity to get in the double bonus. Two shots on every foul, but don't fade away and don't pull up short. If you're going to take him in the paint, take him to the basket if you're Sadiq Bay. Try to draw the foul. Zegaraski, trap, calls for timeout, and Evan Burroughs gives it to him. You know, one of the things Coach McDermott told us before the game, he says, we got to get Mitch Ballock off early and often. And here on an inbounds pay, a little slip by Colin Gillespie, and that's all Mitch Ballock needed. All he needs is a little bit of daylight, a little crack in the shade. Well, let's take a look at Mike DeCourcy. Always, each week, sends out his brackets, and he says about six teams here from the conference right now should be in the NCAA tournament. He has Seton Hall as a two seed, Nova as a three seed, Creighton a six seed. And St. John's a pleasant surprise out of 12. Mike Anderson coming in in his first year. If he can get them to the tournament, man, what a success. Yeah, he's got them as basically the last four in. If we take a look at the Big Ten, largely probably the most competitive conference in the country with 10 teams he's got in, but the Big E's right there with six. That shot off the mark. Robinson Earl, the rebound. Here comes Colin Gillespie. I'm not sure that's exactly what they discussed in that huddle. There you go. More drives. He'll go to the line. And I'm sure that's what Villanova discussed in the huddle. Get to the basket, force them to foul, and put us on the free throw line. Jay Wright, Associated Press, coach of the decade over the decade. Won 269 games, two national championships. Again, we talked about it before. Villanova, number eight, top ten in the nation in free throw shooting. Average about 16 free throw attempts per game. It's all part of their formula. And shoot 78% from the free throw line as a team. Moore's got 18, the freshman. Braden's trying to work a little bit of clock right here. Here's Alexander. Jefferson drives a baseline and lays it in. Huge. Shocking that Villanova gave up baseline to Jefferson. As the ball movement out top, got the defense to scramble a little bit, not in position. Under two minutes, Gillespie. Tried to tip it out, but Alexander has it. Creighton in control with a minute 40. Nine-point lead. Jefferson again to the cup. I think it's time to turn out the light, and I think the party's just about over. Go ahead and hit it, Dandy Don. Go ahead and hit it. It's going to take a miracle right now, particularly three-point shooting. Samuels. That one no good. Mahoney snags the board. And Creighton, a minute 11 from their first victory over Nova in basically two years. As we look at the Blue Jays' upcoming schedule, they'll travel to Providence on Wednesday, St. John's, and then Seton Hall. That's a great opportunity for them to climb. This win is huge for them. Jefferson again. Boom! Turns the lights out here at Wells Fargo. Exclamation point. Wow. Damian Jefferson, the junior, the transfer from New Mexico. Six points in the last 55 seconds. Well, first of all, nobody back to protect the basket. You got to be between your man and the bucket. Allows the breakaway. 
And again, it's just a, another breakdown of communication and decisiveness on the defensive end by Villanova. And you know, you wonder again, you know, it didn't happen in the second half, but in the first half, you wonder if Villanova was peaking a little bit at their schedule. You take a look at who they have to play. Well, they got some ranked teams here coming up. Butler on Wednesday. And then they have Seton Hall come to town here uh, in about a week. Although I find it hard to believe because Creighton provided such a, an obstacle in uh, Omaha on January 7th. But coming here in Philadelphia, as we said, 11 out of the last 12, Villanova's been able to beat Creighton. As you mentioned, including six straight. Well, that one is about, that scheme is about to end right here. 9-2 run by the Creighton Blue Jays in the last two minutes and 30 seconds, capped off by that man, Damian Jefferson, who has scored six points here in the last 55 seconds. Well, this has been one of those games where you got huge contributions from guys like Mahoney. Obviously, Alexander in the first half when he needed to. Zegarowski handling it. And that's the story of Villanova's afternoon right there. Got the shot, missed layup. Yeah, Gillespie did what he can, especially coming out at the beginning of the second half. But, you know, Robinson Earl and Samuels, you look, they're combined. Also, you add Bay to that. They're combined 6 of 28. Yeah, particularly no, no field goals over the last three minutes and 41 seconds. Give a lot of credit to the Creighton defense. Zigarowski fouled by Sadiq Bay. That one went off of Creighton. We'll go to Villanova. Yeah, but that one's not going to hurt. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you look at Creighton, they were able to execute the way they wanted to. They got different guys at different moments when they need them to contribute, put points on the board. They made some solid defensive plays, rebounded the ball the way they needed to. You know, as we said, they're minus in rebound margin. Boy, they've had some active hands. Defensively, they have gotten it done. But they have out-rebounded Villanova right now by four. And then, of course, you expect them to shoot well from beyond the arc. But 11 of 22, 50%. So their game was rocking on all cylinders. Forty-six seconds left. Nova will still continue to foul until we hit the one and one. That's what happened right here. Team seven foul. But Villanova had an opportunity that you know they were about to go into double bonus for a number of possessions. Never really took advantage of it. Not to say that you know that would have you know, push them over the top. But they've lost opportunities. Could have forced the Creighton defense to back off a little bit. Mahoney knocks down the first one. He's got a season-high 20. Yeah, Denzel Mahoney just showing out. And he's a straight-up scorer, no question about it. First team all Ohio Valley a couple of years ago, averaging 19 points a game. Man knows how to put the ball in the basket. Now a season high 21. Bay lays it in. And that's a case of too little, too late. Bay commits the personal. His third personal foul. Returns. He replaces City Bay. So Tajan Alexander. Tajan Alexander will go to the line. 
Alexander with 14. He did a lot of his damage in that first half. He's got double double. Yeah, actually, Ten rebounds as well. If he hits these points, these are the first points he scored here in the second half. His third double double on the season. He was just red hot, so it was really the Tyshawn Alexander show in the first half. We come out in the second half as Denzel Mahoney, who really carried this team. Zegarowski was just consistent throughout. He the picked his spot. Yeah. Here's more. Ballock will go to the line, and this one's special to him. He he wears 24. He talks about Kobe Bryant being his That's idol, and he was really excited saying being back here in the hometown of his idol, Kobe Bryant, and what a performance he put on. 15 points for him. Looking to add to it. Carry by Swider. And this is this was the scene here. At Wells Fargo and before the game took time out to remember Kobe Bryant. Of course, grew up here, went to Lower Marion High School where he became a star and went right to the NBA. Full scale substitutions now for Coach McDermott. His Blue Jay squad will go to six and three in the Big East and now just be a game behind Villanova in the standings. And yeah, he's definitely demonstrated some versatility here and the ability to allow the hot hand to take over and play some cohesive team defense as well. And to come into this place again, losing six in a row, 11 out of the last 12. <laughs> they got the job done. So a 15-point win for Greg McDermott and the Creighton Blue Jays as they knock off Villanova. Creighton will go to 17 and 5, 6 and 3 in the Big East. Nova falls to 8, 17 and 4, 7 and 2 in the conference. Here's the updated conference standings. Seton Hall takes the loss. Nova takes the loss, but they remain 1 and 2 in the conference. And now Creighton. Nipping at the heels. Nipping at the heels. They're locked in third place in the Big East. Well, the final, Creighton 76, Nova 61. With my partner, Lynn Elmore, I'm Brian Custer. After the break, we'll check in Steve Lavin, Casey Jacobson, Mike Heal, and our FS1 College Hoop Studio. Stay tuned.